Traveling from Vancouver Island University to the Wei Chow Community Hippo Sanctuary in Ghana's Upper West, students from the Department of Recreation and Tourism Management have traveled to research the costs and benefits of a community-based conservation area. These are the results of that study. Hey, my name is Jaylene, and I am presenting today on behalf of myself, Katie Schneider, Louis Chavez, Ryan Tico, and one of the other member of our team who cannot be here. His name is Michael Lari. So we went to, as Eddie said, the Waitchell Community Hippo Sanctuary, where we did a perceived benefits and sacrifices analysis. So what we're going to talk to you about today is, first of all, we're going to give you an overview of what the Wichau Community Hippo Sanctuary, or WCHS, is, and tell you what we did there. And then we're going to say how we did it, what we found, our challenges, and then, because this is probably the only time we'll ever get the opportunity, we're going to give you, some of our professors, some homework. <laughs> sure you're right. <laughs> all right, so we're going to start off with what the Wichau Community Hippo Sanctuary and I pulled up a, sorry, we can't see so well there. We pulled up a map here, actually, from the Wichita community year-end report from 2008, which shows a map of Ghana. And you can see up here where the arrow is pointing, that is the border between Ghana and Burkina Faso. And what actually marks the border is the Black Volta River. So the communities surrounding it share it with, with Burkina Faso, and that is the site here that you can see. So this is a 40 kilometer stretch of land that is encompassed in the Wichita Community Hippo Sanctuary. So this is a community resource management area, or CREMA, where they developed in 1998 the Wichita Community Hippo Sanctuary, which is comprised of 17 communities, two of which are Walla and 15 are Logi communities. So two different um, and you can see the different sizes here of the communities, and that's the colors. I won't go into too much detail for you, though, for the sake of time. What we did in Wei Chow was, as the title suggests, we did a perceived benefits and sacrifice analysis of the communities of the 17 communities. Now, this is an extension of work that was done in uh, previous years by Aggie and students from BIU and KNUS. If you can go back to the last slide for me, please. Um, okay, one more. Yeah, it's a slow computer part now. Um, so with that, I forgot to say thank you to begin with to VIU and of course PPR who provided us with some funding and IDRC and SHRC. So this is a big project collaboration and we just thank everyone that we had this opportunity to do what we did in Wei Chow, and that was talk to community members. And the methods that we used were focus groups, personal interviews, and community cafes. So we were able to talk with the rangers and tour guides on a more one-to-one -one basis. So the, those are the uh, staff of the Wei Chow Community Hippo Sanctuary. And then our larger focus groups were with some P6 students of the local school there. So we were able to talk to ages ranged, but P6 students around maybe 12, 15, and get their impressions of what the Wichita Community Hippo Sanctuary gave to them and what they lost. So our guiding questions throughout these community cafes, focus groups, and interviews were, what has your community gained from the Wichita Community Hippo Sanctuary? What has your family gained? And what have you gained? And then the opposite question of that to ask was, what has your community lost because of the Wei Chow Community Hippo Sanctuary? What has your family lost? And what have you lost? So it was a really interesting process that we got to go through. We were using translators with us who would, um, we'd ask the questions and they translate, and then we get the answers and they translate. So it was a really great learning experience for, for the five of us. Um, our, the analysis that we use, although this picture doesn't look like we're doing much work, <laughs> we are in fact working hard at the modified get grounded theory approach. So we took all of our field notes and individually we started out with our own analysis 
and came up with our own themes. And then we came together as a group and we reviewed those themes and then refined them. And then we again stick to, stuck together and did a group coding exercise, which is the hardcore field work that you're seeing right here. And uh, we came out with, some, with five main themes. So our primary themes, and unfortunately, uh, we can't go into too great detail. There's so much interesting information that we learned and there are so many great tidbits that we got from them. And especially because last year they were able to talk to the, the staff members of the Wichita Community Living Sanctuary. Whereas this year we actually went to two communities. So we went to Pampa and Dogberry Perry. And we were able to hold the community cafes with these communities who were really close to the river. And one thing that we found that maybe varied a little bit from last year is that the communities that are closer to the Black Volta actually felt more sacrifices than the communities that are further away, like Wing Chow and Takali. So um, the reason why it was great for us to talk to these communities is that when you're talking to Wing Chow and Takali, everything's great. The sacrifices are minimal and the benefits are large and everybody's happy and they're employed and they've got clinics and uh, other services, social services in the community because the way child is growing. But once we started digging a little bit deeper, we were able to find that if you don't live right near there, you're not feeling those benefits as much. Although there are great benefits that, that they have. So starting with livelihoods, one great quote that we have from someone there, or from one of the Shea Co-op ladies, which is one story group that I forgot to mention that we did focus groups with as well, was the Organic Shea Nut Cooperative. It's a group of ladies who have been um, given fair pricing for their Shea Nuts. When they harvest them now, they don't have to stand the risk of maybe not being paid for their Shea Nuts. So it's a really great organization, or yeah, cooperative that has been developed with the Wichita Community Hippo Sanctuary and um, Savannah Fruits Company, etc. <coughs> so they said that the money through the Shea Co-op allows me to keep my house and buy school uniforms and materials for my children. So with the livelihoods theme, we came out with two major ones underneath that. You have your alternative livelihoods and your traditional livelihoods. And it kind of goes that the traditional livelihoods are being lost because there are restrictions within the core zone that are restricting them from their traditional livelihoods. So if you used to be a hunter in the core zone area, there are now restrictions saying that you cannot hunt as much or you cannot hunt there. And there's also fishing restrictions and farming restrictions and oyster harvesting restrictions. So those are their traditional livelihoods that they feel that they've really lost. But then the alternative livelihoods that they have gained, so there's rangers, tour guides, cooks, and then the sanctuary management board who have all been employed. Um, so those are the, the alternative ones. And there's also people who are taking advantage of tourism and they're doing clay pots, or clay clothes, sorry, and selling those to tourists. So there's a little spin-off alternative livelihood creation there too. Uh, another part of livelihood was the economic spin-off that comes into the community. So by employing people, they're spending money in their community, which is helping the community economy grow and grow stronger. Um, and it's, so those were the, the benefits, and it's just the opposite side of that, is the lost sacrifice of the alternative, or the traditional livelihood, sorry. Now to skip on to our second one, which is our infrastructure. Infrastructure for us included boreholes, solar lights, roads, buildings, schools, clinics, banks, and post office. And then of course, the Wichita Community Hippo Sanctuary Visitor Center, which has become a great uh, community gathering spot and for, for them. So the quote that we have here is, boreholes provide access to clean drinking water, so diseases have dropped and community health has increased. So this is kind of a really great twofold one that I'm sure many of you in development have read, that if you give people clean water, then health improves. And this is actually a direct quote from one of the community members of um, Dog Fairy Perry, I believe. And it was very nice to see that they're recognizing that. So 
The other part of the infrastructure that was kind of like a double-edged sword is the solar lights. So they have solar lights and they identify that now that they have solar lights, they can read at night so they can study, so their education is, is improved. And but the other side of it is that the solar lights are running into some issues and there's problems with the batteries and there's problems with that side of stuff. So now they can't fix them, so they're just, some of them are not working. So that was the double-edged sword with the solar lights. They really appreciated the solar lights but the solar lights are no longer working, so it was kind of um, not so great. And then the boreholes were really great as well, although some communities already had them, so they recognized that, yeah, that's a benefit for other people, but we haven't seen that. And that's something that we ran into a lot, was the fact that people were able to identify overall benefits that everybody received, even if they didn't get it, and they still identified with some of the sacrifices that somebody else um, received. So I'm getting to that in my core zone one here, which is the core zone is that area where there's high restrictions. You're not allowed to hunt fish um, or farm or harvest anything within the core zone. Now the development zone is around the core zone, and that's where all the communities are where you are allowed to do those activities. But within the core zone, that's the fertile land. And the fertile land is where all the food grows the best, and where the where the trees are the greatest. So you have greater firewood, and the fish are abundant. And of course, we all know that fertile land is is where we want to be. But they've been removed from that and restricted. So some com communities have been relocated. So that's a drawback of the core zone. So that was one of the major ones that we had that they identified to us. And then the other side of that is the loss of access. Like I'm saying, with the core zone, you're not allowed to hunt fish, oyster, collect, harvest, anything like that, because it's protected. It's a rich biodiverse area, and it's where the hippos are, and it's very important for the Wichita Community Hippo Sanctuary. But that was one of the greatest sacrifices that was identified by the community members and the staff members. And again, the issue came here where a community who hadn't been relocated said that the sacrifice was the fact that they were relocated. So it's an interesting, I think everyone just shares all the same sacrifices and benefits, and it just shows to us how communal life is out there. Um, so one great quote that really hit us, well, hit me personally really hard, was we used to hunt to live through the dry season, but now we are more restricted so my family suffers. So one thing that was identified that can also tie into our livelihoods piece is that there was a lot of subsistence farming and hunting and fishing that went on in the core zone. And now that they've been restricted access to there, they can no longer produce the same amount of food or that they used to, so now they have to buy it. And they can't produce a surplus to sell at the market, so now they have to only produce enough maybe for them to eat and maybe even buy some supplemental. So that's another part of the livelihood that ties in there where they're just, it's kind of a double loss. But um, there's, it was hard for them to say whether or not the, the sacrifices outweigh the benefits because we'll come to it in a little bit, but they really found that there's lots of sacrifices and there are some good benefits too. So education. One quote that we've got here is, now that the school is in our community, our kids have a brighter future. So this is probably one of our favorite aspects of the Waytown Community Hippo Sanctuary is the access to education that they have provided. So they've built schools and they, they keep building them in the Waytown um, community and in uh, smaller communities as well. So this quote comes from a small community where they used to have to travel, I think it was five kilometers to a school. So it was really difficult for the kids to get there. But now they're only having to travel one or two kilometers, so it's way more accessible and their future is brighter and they have always valued education, they said, but it was too challenging to get there. So now they have that access and they can get to school and they can read at night because of the solar lights and they're really seeing those tangible benefits. They're also benefiting through the employees because the employees are getting some informal education through the training programs and the and that cooperative as well. Now onto our last primary theme is culture. So culture was one that we identified where they are being exposed to a new culture. They may be losing some of their 
traditional cultural practices within the core zone, which has to do with the, the loss of access. There are only a few identified there, but a lot of them really cherish the, the value of meeting tourists and being exposed to different cultures and sharing their culture with other people because they're so proud of their culture and they're really happy that they can, can, can communicate with the outside world and show how great Wing Chow really is. So those are our primary themes and overall it was, it was really great to see that there are lots of benefits that were identified and there are some sacrifices and as I said before it varies from which community you're in and how close to the core zone you are. So that's part of your homework. So keep that in mind. We'll get back to that. So our challenges that we ran into, although the people marking that is in the picture here, so a challenge is just a really <laughs> awesome part of our tour. Um, we ran into maybe some challenges with translation. As I said before, it's a great learning experience for us because you'd say something and then it get translated and then it come back to you. So there, there's always issues in translation, as I'm sure everyone here knows, with something being lost in translation. And also with the comfort of the person that is being that is translating it for you. Unfortunately, we weren't able to have any female translators, so I found we found that that was uh, maybe a little bit of a drawback for when you're doing focus groups with women. And, but we had very great translators. They're, they're key community leaders, and they're trusted amongst the community. So without them, we wouldn't have been able to be there. But that may have been one of our, our small challenges. Now, we also experienced the halo effect. So when people were telling us about the benefits that they received, uh, they would talk about mosquito nets and computers and bicycles for their school children. And those actually came from different programs. But because our key leaders are the, the leaders of the community and are involved in many different projects, they are the face of donations. So when the school children are getting stuff from a different organization, it's they may not remember the name of the, the organization that's donating it, but they remember the face of Isaku. So they think, which our community Hippo Sanctuary gave me a computer or a bicycle. So they are definitely experiencing some, some of that effect. Um, we also ran into what we call the silent majority. So when you're in a focus group and you have 15 people there, but you're only hearing from maybe three or four. So that was a bit of a challenge for some of us. Some didn't, didn't experience it and some did. So if you've got three people in a group of 15 that are always sharing their advice, perhaps everyone else just agrees, but perhaps there's some voices out there that, that are being lost. And then the last one that we identified was time restraints. We didn't have a lot of time in the community. We were there for 11 days. And although it was fantastic, we could have spent so much more time there and visited many more communities. Because like we said, we only did two communities out of 17. So it's something that I'm sure will be improved on over the years to come. And it's an ongoing project. So it will definitely, definitely get better. So. On the, close to the end here, we'd like to start or finish off with some thank yous. So we'd like to really thank Aggie Wheel for all of her guidance and help and hard work that has gone into this project. And uh, Protected Areas and Poverty Reduction, thank you so much for your funding and your support and, and the knowledge of the research as well that's already out there that we were able to pull from to help guide our research. Donna Shepard was amazing in community for us. She has very strong links there, and many of you know how fantastic she is. So thank you, Donna, and NCRC, and the Calgary Zoo. And then we'd also really like to thank the Waychowna. Without the Waychowna, who is the paramount chief of the Waychow area, we'd never be able to do anything in there. So thank you to the Waychowna, the Metiona, and the Tukalina, who all were very supportive in our research efforts. And of course, the staff of the Waitchell Community Hippo Sanctuary, the communities of Tampa and Dog Ferry, Dog Ferry Perry, P6 students, and the Organic Shane and Cooperative Ladies. We'd really like to thank you and for thank them. So we would all like to say thank you, Verica, Madase, and Asante. For <laughs>